So hi, my name's Liz Parrish and I'm at the NOW Gallery today. I'm sorry I can't be with you because these are important conversations and important topics that we're talking about, but I'm really happy to be here at all. Uh, so today we're going to talk about radical life extension or life extension in general and what does that mean to the world? What are the social implications of extending lifespan? And more importantly, what we're working on at my company BioViva, extending health span because we don't want you to just live longer. We want you to live well longer. We want you to live healthy, youthful, and robust. So in order to really understand the subject, we kind of need to take a walk back into the past. What has been done? What is different about your life today than how people just lived a couple hundred years ago? So in the 18th century, Thomas Hobbes wrote that, Life was nasty, brutish, and short. And that was actually true. The average lifespan of a person in the 1700s was only about 35 years of age. Uh, so how things change now? Uh, we've already had what would be considered radical life extension. And how did it happen? It happened because of science. Uh, so with the advent of antibiotics and immunizations, we were able to triple lifespan. Believe it or not, you're already living a radical life extension. But the problem is, is that now we're not living these short lives that end really quickly. We're living longer lives and we're suffering frailty and disability. Uh, we're spending more time in these sort of disease states. Uh, if you think about it, Alzheimer's is eight to 10 years of your life. Heart disease can, can be half of it, just slowly, incrementally making you sicker over time. And cancer, uh, one of the most feared diagnoses on the planet uh, kills about a third of the population. So what can we do about this? Well, we have to use science uh, to move forward. Uh, we, we do the nat nat next natural step, and that is creating therapeutics uh, that actually do what uh, antibiotics and immunizations did, uh, did for us uh, the first time. Uh, we create now therapies that are going to treat biological aging. Uh, we're going to sort of snuff out and stop biological aging in its tracks and help people live longer, healthier lives. So I'm going to tell you uh, kind of how that would happen and why we would do that. So let's talk about why we would do that. For one thing, it's a great thing for science to do. We want to get rid of suffering on the planet. We want to create meaningful lives for people. But there are also other things that are pressing on us today that were never pressing on us before. There's something called the silver tsunami. <laughs> okay, so think about a big wave of, of silver, gray-haired people that are about to uh, assess essentially roll right over the economy. So in 2020, we'll have more people on the planet over 65 than under the age of five. So what does that mean? What are the implications for that? So that means that the five-year-olds go on to be 15 and 20. They become the workforce, whereas the 65-year-olds, a growing population, uh, becomes, you know, 70 and 75. Uh, they become disabled. They become um, more sick. Uh, it takes more of the economy to care for their illnesses. But what if we could keep those people healthy? What if we could actually uh, create robust people out of the persons who are alive now? What if people could work longer? Uh, what if they could enjoy their life uh, for an extended period of time? Uh, this is a massive benefit of, of the sciences that we're doing. So when we talk about biological aging being a disease, let's remember we're not talking about chronological aging. We want you to get older by years. We want you to get as old as, as you wish to be. We want to create healthy bodies uh, that don't get sick. But um, that, that, that uh, biological aging is actually something that's happening at the cellular level. That's what we're going after. So we're going after biological aging, not chronological aging. You want, want to get older, we want you to get older, but we do not want you to biologically age. And what is biological 
people aging. Well, that's probably what you're wondering. What is driving these diseases like cancer and Alzheimer's and heart disease and, and, a, and a few other things like frailty that people uh, do die of? You know, they fall down and break their hip. Well, it's cells getting old. And cells getting old do all sorts of things. Uh, they, start, they stop signaling really well. Their proteins don't signal to other cells as well. They don't receive things. We, we uh, have attrition of our stem cells. Uh, we have less stem cells in our body, so we have less ability to uh, recover from injury. Uh, we have attrition of our telomeres. Uh, this is something that our company looks at uh, specifically. Our telomeres get shorter as our cells divide. Uh, so there are a whole slew of these markers like glycation and other things that I won't get into right now, but certainly you can look them up. You can come see them on our website or, or, or other universities who are working on similar problems. Uh, but these are the sort of hallmarks of aging that we're going after. And this, these are the reasons that we couldn't cure disease in the past. So we were like throwing billions of dollars, you've got to kind of picture billions of dollars at cancer and billions of dollars at, at uh, dementia. And now trillions of dollars uh, are the projection for the next several years. Uh, we cannot solve these problems because we weren't solving the root cause of the problem. Uh, our company is not the only one. Some of the biggest players in the world are now getting involved in this. So it's really, you know, the science is there. It's not science fiction. It's, it's a fact. Uh, we are doing this in animal models. We have several animal models that we've actually extended life uh, as far as 11 times. And this is healthy life. Again, that's what we're, that's what we're uh, sort of uh, basing this premise on. We want you to be healthy longer. So let's talk about some of the benefits of longevity. What are the benefits of longevity? So we already talked about cost savings. It'll cost us a lot of money because we won't be paying for these really expensive diseases. Suffering savings, uh, people will be suffering less. But what about education? What if you had a longer life to actually spend uh, doing the things that you like to and getting the education when you're ready? And maybe even having a couple different parts of your life where you do vastly different things. Uh, you never have to get bored. Equality. Uh, certainly health is a big issue. If we could bring good health to the world and everyone was on equal standing uh, from birth all the way through their life with a strong, healthy, robust body, we, we can actually work towards these bigger causes of equality. Uh, as far as the environment, this gives us more time to think about our actions. If you live long enough to see uh, the response to the thing that you dump into the river, uh, for instance, if you start to see uh, three-eyed fish because you continued to pollute a certain area of the world, well, then you're certainly going to see the impact and you're going to have a greater response to ensuring that that doesn't happen. So we're hoping that through longevity, and we will all take incentive in taking care of the earth better and taking care of each other better. So a lot of people ask me, how did I get into this? Why, why would I do this? And, and really, it is passion. Uh, my son got sick, and I was determined to find a cure for him and for other kids. Um, I just so happened to get into the life extension round because it turns out that a lot of what's driving childhood disease is actually driving the diseases in adults, as a matter of fact, more so. And so this was the most likely place to solve the problem for both the elder population and the younger population. And it gives us a breadth of knowledge to solve very difficult diseases uh, that we don't understand today. This is the place to start. And if we just take an emphasis really quick on passion, uh, I would really like to encourage kids and adults, I don't want you to be limited by age. Uh, age is not a defining factor of when you find your passion. For me, it wasn't until my 40s. Uh, for some people, they find it when they're a teenager. But the most important thing is that you run with that passion, uh, that that is what drives you. You need your education. You need your education for the background knowledge on what you will do with your life. So garner as much knowledge as you can in your life, but always search for your passion because that's how you're ultimately going to change the world. And if you're here watching this, I know that you're one of the people who's going to do that. It's not special people that change the world. It's people who get ignited uh, by a passion, by something that they can't sleep at night uh, without solving. And don't think that any problem is too big. You know, I, was, I always say that I'm just somebody's mother. But in fact, my company is working on a cure for the, the gra grandest disease on, on the planet.
biological aging, and that cure will have implications to children all over the world as well. And we have the, um, the strong strong need to get these technologies all around the world. We can't just solve the problem. These technologies will belong to everyone. We will have a mandate once we do and achieve uh, this science. So again, I just want to inspire you. I want you to know that a passion and a grand future does not just lie in me. I'm an ordinary person. It lies in every one of you. So find the spark, uh, let it take off, and find your future through your passion. That's it.